My name is Yana Simeonidou. Uh, my field of expertise is uh, architectural design with digital media. And the title of our lecture today is Biomimetic Principles for Energy Efficiency in Buildings. Uh, the lecture and the corresponding paper is co-authored by myself and uh, Mr. Alexandros Eftathiadis, who is a graduate of fine arts and he also holds a degree on strategic product design and he's currently applying for PhD studies under my supervision. Um, so, um, for this particular conference, we are focusing on the biomimetic principles that um, relate to energy efficiency. But first of all, I will start with a short explanation about biomimicry. So nature has um, developed high performance structures and materials over billions of years of evolution and has always been a valuable source of inspiration for architectural, mechanical, um, hydrodynamic uh, and electrical design solutions, as well as for advanced material technology. Biomimicry is currently a driving paradigm uh, for advanced um, material technology and design. And in this uh, chart, you can see research areas that employ biomimicry based on the web of knowledge database. So, uh, humans have always drawn inspiration from nature to design artifacts. Also, since the Stone Age, the caveman weapons were designed after the observation of the teeth of the carnivores. The Chinese managed to create artificial silk more than 3,000 years ago. And the flying machine of Leonardo da Vinci and the Wright brothers both copied the anatomies of the bat and the bird wings in 1488 and 1903, respectively. While more recently, Velcro inventor George de Mestral was inspired by the hooked seeds of the baddock plant and created the first hook and loop fastener in 1955. There are numerous examples of uh, biomimetic principles in design and engineering, like the self-cleaning uh, glazings based on the lotus flower, um, also uh, materials that imitate the, the skin of the shark that are used for boats for reducing friction, among others. There is a paradigm shift taking place and research in biomimicry and nature-inspired design is growing exponentially. In this uh, graph, you can see the, um, the blue tiles refer to research articles and the red tiles refer to conference papers. So, uh, Otto Smith originally developed the term biomimetics in 1957 for a device that he built that imitated the electrical action of a nerve as the cooperation of biology and technology with a goal to provide technical solution. However, the term bionic was then used by Jack Steele in 1960, referring to the science of designing systems with some functions inspired from nature. The term biomimicry, however, had never been used until 1969 when it was coined by Otto Schmidt as the philosophy of an interdisciplinary design approach that uses nature as a model for social, environmental, and economic um, processes. So in 1974, the term biomimicry appeared for the first time in the Webster Dictionary, and the definition was the study of the formation, structure, or function of biologically produced substances and materials, as enzymes or silk, and biological mechanisms and processes as protein synthesis or photosynthesis especially for the purpose of synthesizing similar products by artificial mechanisms which mimic natural ones. Nevertheless, the term wasn't popularized until 1997 and the publication of Janine Benyu's book titled Biomimicry, Innovation Inspired by Nature. According to Benyu, biomimicry is the new science that studies nature's model 
and then imitate or takes inspiration from these designs and processes to solve human problems. The boundaries between all the aforementioned terms are not clear and they very often overlap. On this Venn diagram, you can see clearly the relation among the above terms. And it is very important to note here that drawing inspiration from nature solely on aesthetic terms is called biomorphism. And this is known from the ancient years. There are also organic forms even on the Acropolis. However, a design is truly biomimetic when it is informed by nature's science following a systematic method focused on function. The Biomimicry Institute has identified 10 patterns in design solutions that occur in nature that can be used as lessons in contemporary design problems with deep and profound results in our society. This is according to Peterson. So nature uses only the energy it needs. It recycles all the materials. Nature is resilient to, dis to disturbances. It optimizes rather than maximizes. And it rewards cooperation. Nature runs on information. It uses chemistry and materials that are safe for living beings and builds using abundant resources, incorporating ready resources only sparsely, only when needed. So it is locally attuned and responsive and uses shape to determine functionality. For example, the shape of a tree, it is obvious that the shape of the tree uh, functions in order to distribute the loads of the branches and the roots act as anchors to also bring up all the nutrients to the tree. So, applying biomimetic principles in the design process can be a bewildering and daunting task for researchers from different disciplines. And methodological tools and processes have been designed to bridge this knowledge gap and facilitate the biomimetic design process. The following list includes some of the tools and methods that are used by researchers, engineers, and designers to aid the biomimetic design process. To name a few, Bib Lab, Idea Inspired, BioTrees, Ask Nature, Dane, designed by analogy to nature engine. We could continue discussing biomimetic principles in design and engineering. However, for the scope of this presentation, we will mainly focus uh, on buildings that are inspired by nature, and more specifically, we will see some cases, three case studies, that utilize biomimetic principles for energy efficiency. Among the seminal examples of biomimetic architecture is the Harare East Gate Center in Zimbabwe by architect Mick Pierce. And the design of this building was based on two models that explain the functionality and energy efficiency of the termite mounts. The termites uh, are species that uh, live in uh, Africa, America, and Asia, so we don't have this type of termites in Europe. And the models that relate to the air conditioning and thermoregulation and the stack effect that occurs in open chimney mounds, we can see that based on the above um, um, diagrams, the open chimneys are exposed to higher wind velocities and thus turn and end, so are explained. A venturi flow draws the fresh air into the mound through the ground level openings and then through the nest and finally out through the chimney. So based on this observation, the East Gate uh, Center, the tall stacks, induce the fresh air into the building while the heat produced by the occupants leads to the thermosiphon effect explained here in the previous diagram uh, from the lower spaces upwards. So the combination of the aforementioned principles lead to a relatively steady interior temperature between 10 and 14 degrees Celsius, which considering the climate of Harare is a very efficient design accomplishment. So this passive cooling system is a sustainable 
alternative to air conditioning and reducing the building's energy consumption efficiently. Uh, the function of gas exchange in the termite mode is an analogy, sorry, of uh, the lung, the human lung, that offers a new, uh, that offers all this circulation of air. So the next case study is the Council House 2 in Melbourne, again by architect Mick Pierce in collaboration with Design Inc. and in collaboration with the city of Melbourne. So there is also a very strong biomimetic inspiration here. Just as natural systems, the limbs and organs of the building are integrated, aiming to form a biological synergy, where the building components are analogous to leaf system, roots, bronchia, stems, and epidermis. Here you see an organizational diagram that explains the modus operandi of the building and how it uses different means to control the temperature. I'm not sure if you can read these letters. I will focus on the most important ones, thermal shielding of the windows to limit direct sun exposure on the north side, the opening of the upper part of the building in the night for a period of five hours permits an exchange of the heat gained by the concrete because of the thermal mass with cool air, reducing the building's cooling requirements by 20%. The shower towers on the facade cools the water that has been used in the phase change plant before it is again collected. The fresh air that is drawn in through the shower towers is taken into the building. So um, this diagram is really interesting, but I don't have the time to explain every single part of it, but I strongly recommend that uh, you have a look in the bibliography because there are several systems that coexist and uh, act synergetically, just like systems in a natural organism. So, with the aim to achieve uh, the highest level of sustainability in terms of leadership, I think the slides are a little bit mixed up. Maybe there was a problem here, sorry. So, the last presentation is the California Academy of Sciences. Uh, this is a work by architect Renzo Piano, pretty famous in Greece by the recent buildings here in Athens. Uh, with the aim to achieve the highest level of sustainability in terms of leadership in energy and environmental design, the LEED, uh, this building does not only employ a series of energy saving materials, but also the roof itself is an example of a holistic architecture and a holistic and sustainable approach. The architect Renzo Piano has collaborated with botanists to ensure the design of a living roof with native California species and plants. So the design draws also inspiration from the termite mounds that we saw previously. The mounds of the roof have an inclination of 60 degrees and they draw cool air into the building offering natural ventilation through the openings at the top of the peaks, which produce again a chimney effect. These are also complemented by high efficiency photovoltaics, which produce around 5% of the energy needs. So seeing these examples, we may say that the first one employs a biomimetic principle, those found on the termite uh, mounts for energy efficiency. The second example, the council house in Melbourne, establishes a biological synergy among systems. There are several systems coexisting, like a natural organism. And the third example, the California Academy of Sciences by Renzo Piano, displays a holistic approach. It's like a small ecosystem. So, uh, uh, some concluding remarks. A series of biomimetic principles that can lead to energy efficiency in building 
have been presented, highlighting the aspects of performance-oriented design inspired by natural forms. Research in biomimicry is providing biological design solution in contemporary design challenges. The research is constantly gaining ground with the development of new tools and platforms that take designers to find solution to engineering problems. Approaching the epoch of the Anthropocene, it is urgent to avoid irresistible changes due to the human impact on Earth. Biomimetically inspired designs of buildings or facades can build resilience against global climate change. The advancements in CAD, CAE, CAM, computer-aided design, computer-aided engineering and manufacturing enable the construction, study and optimization of complex structures and systems that couldn't have otherwise been achieved. So we can analyze the future performance of a building before even building it. And it has been possible to study the efficiency of performance through tools such as finite element methods and CFD, computational fluid dynamics, and optimize the form for certain performance criteria, like thermal comfort, natural ventilation, daylighting. And eventually, we can also manufacture complex architectures with the use of numerically controlled machines, CNC machines, 3D printers, and so on. More specifically, additive manufacturing technologies like uh, fused deposition modeling, FDM, selective laser sintering, metal sintering, and others have proved to be successful in the construction of structural building elements. And biomimetic design combined with 3D printing is a significant step towards sustainability since it can produce lightweight design through more efficient matter distribution and as a result, reduce energy consumption in production, transfer, usage, and life cycle. So I would like to say here that this is an ongoing uh, research together with uh, Mr. Alexandros Eftathiadis. And we will continue researching the impact of biomimicry in design through the use of digital technologies with a special emphasis on uh, 3D printing. So most probably in some future conference, we will be able to present some of the experiments, some of the first research outcomes. And at this stage, I would like to thank you very much for your attention.